Kareem Biggs Burke grew up here in the projects of Harlem, a place as rich in spirit as it is fraught with dangers. You learn early on the difference between fireworks and gunshots. <laughs> Biggs says there are not a lot of stories like his, where people without resources go on to make it big time. His own brother Bob perished on these streets years ago when they were both young men. I got a call around midnight that he was uh, killed, um, shot uh, nine times. I mean, I always just imagine myself out of this environment and doing something bigger. Biggs left Harlem long ago. He's a self-made millionaire many times over, but he's not forgotten the years his family ended up in a homeless shelter. It was a tough time um, for me and my family. But it was at that age, uh, around 12 years old, and I said, I'll never be impoverished again. His opportunity came in his late teens. That's when one of his childhood friends, Damon Dash, introduced him to Sean Carter, a wannabe rapper from Brooklyn. Not long after that, the three founded Rockefeller Records, and Sean Carter became known as Jay-Z. We made hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, we sold probably close to 60 million records. That was more than 20 years ago. Back then, Biggs' hunger for a better life led him to seek out the symbols of wealth. So we always looked outside of our media culture because we wanted to, to be bigger and grow and also experience what the world had to offer. Biggs says he got Jay-Z to rap about these luxury products by name. Products like cars and drinks and even a line of clothing they themselves produced. All of this influenced fans and brought huge profits to Rockefeller. When Biggs finishes his morning workout, his stylist, Simone King, meets him at the gym to help him select sneakers and his outfit for the day. Give me what you're not taking. Awesome. Next up, Biggs, Simone, our film crew, and Atu, the driver, are hurrying across the George Washington Bridge for a meeting with a high-end mass market blue jeans company based in the center of Manhattan's garment district. The Rockefeller days are long gone, but Biggs is still in the business of selling lifestyle products. Only now, he's using his access to hip-hop royalty and his understanding of emerging urban trends to bring the trappings of that lifestyle to mainstream merchants seeking new markets. I go to the ground level and, and I want to figure out what's happening with the everyday people. What are they wearing? What are they talking about? What are they drinking? What are they listening to? Then you, you can figure out what's happening in the marketplace. Biggs has leveraged his personal contacts and his marketing savvy into building a portfolio of more than seven different companies, ranging from clothing to beverage to media and brand consulting. I mean, people pay millions of dollars for that access. We're going to here. Biggs' first meeting today is with the luxury clothing maker One Jeans Group to talk about the launch of Biggs' licensed line of jeans called 4th of November. Nice to see you. Yeah. Biggs wants these jeans to reflect his multicultural milieu, a mixture of styles he calls mash culture. With this brand, we can definitely push the limit because we're saying this is designers, street, and also with the sports, uh, it's a cultural mashup. The launch date is now just a few months away, and Biggs is counting on Jack Gross, the CEO, to meet that November deadline. The speed is our forte. Yeah. So normally it's 110 days for us to uh, start and deliver a product. And in this particular instance, we're going to be doing it in about 90 days. Yeah. And Jack is counting on Biggs to get big name endorsements and build influencer excitement. We'll handle that too, and we'll yeah. get all stylists that, you know, handles all celebrities, influencers as well. So that we'll make sure that they get all the product. That's, that's actually low-hanging fruit for us. As we left the meeting, Jack told us about a question he asked Biggs and his partners early on. An innocent question Biggs remembers, too. How did you all meet? And they answered without hesitation. They said, we met in jail. I'm looking at Jack, and he has this expression on his face like, did these guys just say jail? <laughs> I took a deep breath and sat back in my chair. I said, okay, I hope you don't mind. I said, I really would like to know the backstory. I think he said something to the effect of that, you know, just because you make bad decisions, don't make you bad people. Biggs has really spent a lot of time helping other prisoners that have been in jail and get on the right track. And I always, myself, always feel uh, that it's a responsibility of all of us to try to help people that maybe made a mistake in their life. It's time for lunch, so Biggs heads uptown. At 147th Street, we pull up at Mama Sushi, owned by Reuben O'Reilly. What's up, bro? Good. What's up with you? Yeah, long time no see. Well, you <laughs> Reuben is Dominican. His food, Japanese Caribbean fusion. And the location, Harlem. 
This is ground zero for the kind of cultural mashup mass marketers like Jack Gross hope to better understand. You know, I've been curious to know how that's working in, like, in the multicultural markets with the wine. Well, the presentation is big right now because now in this era that everybody taking yeah. pictures. Oh my God. Can I take this with me? When I sit down with Ruben, I, I get to understand what's happening in the multicultural market. For Biggs, Lunch with Ruben is also market research for his next meeting, a beverage merchant, Domain Select, downtown. So back we go. The owner and founder is Italian-born Paolo Dominighetti. Looking good, man. Paolo wants Biggs' branding agency to help his company launch new brands of rum and mezcal. He wants Biggs to deliver the mashup consumers that Reuben O'Reilly is already serving uptown in Harlem. So they start by sampling different blends. We have to appeal to consumer, to young consumer, to the new generation, and, and for us is find the flavor profile that, that they are like. It. I'm definitely happy with the, the brand messaging, uh, the quality of spirits that they have. And thanks to, to people like, like Biggs, you have the opportunity to, to reach to people. Day's not done. Team Biggs heads south to merch traffic, where Biggs has another clothing business called Reasonable Doubt. His head of merchandising, Radu Watson, has been watching t-shirt trends. What's the read y'all been getting, like, on the, the whole 90s hip-hop, uh, that era right now? Is it's, it? it's, I mean, it's everything. It's exploding, There's huh? nothing hotter than 90s hip-hop. It's blowing out at every retailer, from Bloomingdale's down. The Reasonable Doubt streetwear label takes its name from Jay-Z's first album, the one he, Jay, and Dame produced 20 years ago. Big says they're all for it, and today he's just received access to use some never-released photos. Just photos I've never seen before. <laughs> I've probably known Radu now since I was about 14 years old, around the same time that I met Damon, so we go way back. We come from the same place. We, we've been doing this for a long time together. We formed like this brotherhood, and the thing that we had in common was the same thing with a lot of people in the neighborhoods that we grew up with is that we all came from, you know, poor circumstances and we, would tr we had visions to kind of get out, out of our neighborhoods and to do something bigger. Last stop tonight will be a big working dinner at the tiny Ed's Lobster Bar in Soho. What's going on? How was your trip? It was good. Yeah? Just, where was you? Just LA, you know, just get back. Linwood Bibbins is the founder of the international media company Reach TV. He just flew in from LA and he's hungry. I want the, the uh, big clam. Linwood distributes exclusive video content for hundreds of hotels and airports worldwide, and Biggs is looking to team up with him. Uh, we're going to be dealing with multiple artists and athletes. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should do something like a little sit down with them. We're thinking about how to combine uh, what we're both doing together to, to build something bigger. You find out new opportunities every time I meet with him. We didn't finalize anything today, but we made, um, I think, some headway on how we can work together. Ask Biggs how he got to the top and manages to stay there when so many others like him have failed, and he'll tell you there's just no recipe to follow. I mean, there's no map. There's, there's no master plan on how I do these things. Um, friends of mine, you know, they joke and say that's my superpower of how to connect these dots.